Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 39, and this is our final day looking at verbs of motion. We have that third column to talk about, right? We talked about in, indeterminates like chagit, then determinates like iti, and now we're looking at perfective uh, motion verbs like aiti, right? So uh, this will conclude our exhaustive coverage of these motion verbs. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I could tell you that uh, you know, I've said several times that uh, we're trying to leave no stone unturned here. So you may be wondering, okay, is there anything else to know about motion verbs? Sort of, uh, but not in essence, right? So uh, what are the two major things? There are other types of motion, right? So there are other verbs of, of motion. Uh, off the top of my head, I think there are around 15 or so in the entire Russian language, right? Um, so there are there are verbs of motion for like dragging, chasing, rolling, things like that. Okay, so also some verbs for conveyance, right? Like carrying, leading, um, taking by vehicle, which we'll learn in book uh, two already, right? So basically there are other types of motion, but all those are gonna work exactly like the verbs of motion we've already seen, right? They're gonna each have three infinitives, right? Three infinitives for each type of motion and they're gonna work exactly like the very basic ones we've seen already, right? The, the five simple ones that we've covered so far, right? Motion by foot, motion by vehicle, motion by air, motion by water, and running. Okay, so you can see that there's really not anything to learn there additionally beyond just simply the, the words themselves, right? Now, then another topic uh, are prefixed verbs of motion. So eventually in book, uh, well, we're going to introduce this in book two and then look at it in great detail in book three, right? We're going to see prefixed verbs of motion. I may have mentioned this already briefly, right? Uh, so let's take, for example, the verb chagit. You can create prefixed verbs like chagit, which means to walk in, vichagit, which means to walk out, vichagit, uh, which means to cross, Schadit, uh, which means to go down. Schadit, which means to go up. Prichadit, uh, which means to arrive. Prachadit, uh, which means to go past. And uh, so on and so forth, right? So um, we're going to learn how to take prefixes and add them to motion verbs and other verbs to create new verbs. Now, the key, I might just throw this out right now. Uh, one of the key parts to using prefixed motion verbs is that they, they're simple, right? When we start adding the prefixes, we're going to be left with just pairs of infinitives, right? Aspectual pairs, just like the simple verbs we already learned, right? So that those will already be simpler. Uh, they'll, they'll be very straightforward, right? So again, when we, when we use the term verbs of motion, we really generally mean these very difficult forms with three infinitives. Now later, we'll call these more specifically unprefixed verbs of motion, right? To distinguish them to distinguish these difficult motion verbs with three infinitives from the much simpler prefixed forms that we'll learn later, right? So unprefixed is what we've been studying. Later we'll add prefixed, but they won't be tricky at all, right? So again, in terms of how these unprefixed verbs of motion work uh, that we've been seeing the past several days, there really isn't a whole lot more to say about them really at all that I can think of that I know of, right? So if uh, if I'm missing something, uh, you know, uh, page me or whatever, right? I, I just, I don't, I don't know. Does anyone know what a page is? Um, obsolete technology. Okay, so anyway, I think we've covered these really quite exhaustively. Now, we'll have opportunity later in book two and three to come back and review all this stuff. And we'll also add some additional verbs, right, both unprefixed and prefixed. But in terms of the basics here that we've covered, there's really nothing more to add. Okay, let's start off with another visit with Yuri Gagarin, right? Первый человек в космосе. So our verb, our perfective verb of motion for uh, vehicle, going by vehicle, is поехать. And Gagarin famously said before his liftoff, поехали, поехали, right? Which means something, well, literally it means it's past tense, so it means we set off by vehicle. But here it's used in a rather peculiar sense. Payechali is sort of like an invitation, like an exhortation. Hey, let's get going. Let's go. Right? That, that type of thing. Right? So he said, Payechali. Uh, 
You can also hear if you're going by foot, right, including for in-town outings, like, hey, let's go to the movies, you'd say, Pashli kino, right? Pashli, Pashli, right? Hey, everyone, Pashli. Meaning, again, literally, we have set off, set out on foot, but again, in this particular usage, it means like, hey, let's go already. Let's, let's go. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, there's just a little detail, right, on uh, a usage of these verbs you'll hear very often. Payechle pashli, as an invitation to go somewhere. Uh, here's another poster with uh, Brezhnev, um, biggest eyebrows in, in human history, right? Uh, he says, Tak pajom je smiela period po puti vidushemu komunizmu. Leonid Brezhnev. Okay, so he was in charge in the 70s. That's referred to sometimes as the period of zastoy, which means sort of stagnation, right? Uh, after the oiti period, right, the period of the thaw, when things loosened up a bit, things got a bit more strict and uh, more boring by anyone's standards, right, in the 70s. And uh, anyway, a series of rather geriatric... Uh, uh, general secretaries, right, in charge until finally we get Gorbachev, right, with his perestroika. So we'll talk about that later, right? And of course, that's sort of the closing chapter in the uh, in the history of the Soviet Union. Okay, uh, so what does Brezhnev say here? Pajom, right? We will set off. Um, now, you know, I have to question his ideology, his ideological commitment here, because uh, I don't like this paidiom. It suggests that we have we have yet to set off on our path toward communism. Okay, so if I were some ideologue, I would I would let this guy sit in jail for a while because I that, I don't like the implications of his verb of motion, right? Uh, okay, but you know, you're free to have your own opinion, but I disagree. Okay. Okay, anyway, I'm joking a bit, but right, we're used to seeing idiom, right? We are on the way, so it's maybe a little bit peculiar if we're splitting hairs to see idiom, right? We will boldly set out onward, right? There's our, another word we've seen over and over, period, right? Onward, forward, poputi, along the path that leads toward communism. Okay. Um, so let's look at conjugating perfect, these perfective verbs. Well, this is pretty easy. If we remember that they, for the most part, are simply adding pua, right? Now, pua is a prefix, of course, but we would still refer to this generally as the third infinitive in, in our sets of unprefixed verbs of motion, all the verbs we've, we've seen so far, right? Uh, the only exception here is really paiti, right? We have a little spelling difference, right? Instead of an e, like we had with the t, we get ikratkaya, right? And we end up with paidu, paidjosh. Pajot, Pajom, Pajot, Pajdu, right? Looks pretty much like Idu, Idjosh, Idjot. Okay, similarly, Payechet conjugates a lot like Yechet, right? Exactly like Yechet, we just add Pua. Payedu, Payedish, Payedit, and finally, Ani Payedut. Litiet, again, just work, Politiet, it's going to work just like Litiet, we simply add Pua. Ya politiu, tu politish, ani politiat. Plit, that's a verb, right? We conjugate pa plit in exactly the same way. Poplivu, poplivyosh, poplivut. Bijat, we get the perfected pobijat. It conjugates, again, this is an irregular verb, but it's going to work exactly like bijat. Ya pobigu, tu pobijish, ani pobigut. Uh, now, the past tense forms will also mirror the, uh, the forms without the poor that we learned on day 38. So the only one worth mentioning maybe is pai ti, right? It, that's, remember, it has that irregular past. So here we get pasho, pashla, pashlo, pashli. Okay, how would we translate any of these forms? We would hopefully use our little uh, keyword to set off, right? Setting off, heading off, going setting out on one's journey. So here they are in the a few examples. Ya paidu, ana paiedet, ti pobijish. Right? Now remember when we conjugate these forms, these are all perfective verbs. So when we simply conjugate them, the resulting form is future tense in meaning, right? Just 
as is true of any perfected verb. We should know that already. So we could translate these as I will go, he will go, you will run. But that doesn't really nail down the meaning necessarily. We should really think of these as meaning I will set off on foot, he will set off by vehicle, uh, you will set off running, right? It's the idea of setting off uh, right, the start of the motion that these perfected verbs are describing. Okay, so on page 196, right, again, let's talk a bit more about this setting out, setting off, heading off, right? There are different ways you could phrase this. Um, okay, so let's look at some uh, sentences and try unpacking them. Он сказал до свидания и пошел. Okay, he said hasta la vista, right, until we see each other again, goodbye, and off he went, right? He said goodbye and he set off on foot. Okay, so imagine off he goes, right? He's departed. Number two, мы поплыли по каналу на катере. Okay, we sailed off. We set off by water on our little boat along the uh, canal, right? Per canal. Okay, so let's let's imagine that. Let's say you board the boat, right? You're all ready, and you hear the verb poplili. That means off we went, right? Off goes the boat. Off we went on the boat. Uh, imagine it, right? Heading off from its uh, dock, right into the water. Okay, number three. Gdiana, kudana pashla. Yeah, where is she? To where did she set off on foot? Okay, so someone's gone. We don't know where they are, and so we're asking, well, where did they go off to, right? They've departed. Where did they go off to? Kuda na pashla. Where did she go off to? Number four. Ya ni zna kuda ni payechali. Okay, sounds like someone's left on a trip. They've left by vehicle, and we say, I don't know where they have set off for, right? They've set off on a trip by vehicle. I don't know where they were headed. Number five, Samalyot Politiel Nayuk. Okay, the plane set off through air, right? It set off flying towards the south. It headed south. Okay, so again, the idea of departure. Samalyot Politiel, it's flown off. Number six, Moya Sabaka Pobijalov Park. Okay, the dog ran off into the park, to the park, right? Pobijala. The dog set off running. Okay, maybe you've unleashed it. Let's imagine you're you're at the park entrance. The dog is excited. You unleash it so it's free to go, and then you say, "Ana pobijala." Off she went. Off she ran into the park. Number seven. Chiris chas by na lexio. In an hour from now, we will set off by foot for the lecture. Right? We'll set off for the lecture. Okay, again, that's future tense. That conjugated form is future tense. Number eight, все готово, катер скоро поплывет. Everything's ready. The little boat, the tourist boat, will soon sail off, right? It will set off on, on its journey through water. Okay, we talked about this already, right? A very simple point. This is very important because this kind of uh, thing comes up all the time. Right. Let's say where is where is our friend? Gdje Pavel? Right. Where is Pavel? Well, what if we say okay? So first of all, we should know he's not here anymore. We don't know where he is. And so let's say someone answers that question with the phrase on pašol biblioteku. Okay. What does that phrase literally tell us? Well, if we unpack it carefully, we can get a very good idea of it. Right. On pašol biblioteku means he set off on foot for the library. Right. He was here. And off he went, right? He departed. He set off on his trip to the library. Okay, and again, to make very clear, that's all we know about where Pavel is right now, that he's not here. He set off for the library. Okay, so where is he now? Well, we have no idea, right? He could still be on his way to the library. He could have gone somewhere else, right? We really have no idea. But what would we normally assume, right, uh, given this information? Well, we'd assume that he's probably at the library or at least that he'll make it there soon, right? So that's just kind of a an everyday practical assumption we usually make when we hear a phrase like on pašol bibliotieku, right? We assume that tipier on bibliotiekia. But again, we're trying to be very clear about what these verbs mean 
the verb does not tell us for sure that he's at the library. All it tells us is that he's set off for the library. Okay, now let's look at a couple other examples. What if we heard, again, now we're trying to carefully compare, right, and draw important distinctions between all of these verbs we've learned. What if we hear, on chadil bibliotheku? Okay, we unpack that. He made a round trip to the library. Okay, where would we assume he is now if we hear, on chadil bibliotheku? Well, since that tells us he completed a round trip, we would assume that he is now wherever he was when he started his trip. For example, he's back at home. Right, so we could ask, The normal answer would be, Doma, right? We assume that he's back at home because we know that he's completed his trip. But, again, if we hear, on and we ask, well, again, we really don't know. We really don't know. But we might assume, right? We assume that he's made it, he's completed his one-way trip to the library. Now, we could complete this picture by uh, thinking, what would it mean if we use the determinant? And we say, on show bibliotheku. On show bibliotheku. Let's unpack that. That would mean he was on his way by foot to the library. Okay, now note how that doesn't even get him to the library by any interpretation, right? It just tells us he was on his way there. Right, so that sort of leaves him somewhere along the path to the library. Okay, so again, hopefully now, by comparing those three examples in the past tense, you can see that those three verbs are telling us something really very different about the situation, right? Whether the trip has been completed, whether it's whether someone set out and we kind of assume that it's a complete one-way trip, or with Shoal, if all we know is the person was on his way, and we really don't know anything in addition to that. Okay, let's read these examples and let's practice this telling where the person is now, just taking a best guess. Maya Padruga Jiviot Babshijiti. Okay, she lives in the dorm and now we hear that Ana Pashlak Najurnizal. Okay, so she set off for the gym. Okay, where is she now? Well, we assume if she we assume she made it to the gym, and our best guess is Tipier Rana Trinajurum Zalia. Okay, Yuri Gagarin na Zimlia. Yuri Gagarin lives on planet Earth, or he used to. Uh, number two, uh, and when we hear, right, on the tal of cosmos, he completed a round trip by flight into outer space. Okay, so knowing he's finished a round trip, and we're, we would say, Tipier on na Zimlia, right, he's back on the Earth having completed his round trip, his flight. John Jiviot Vamirikia. Okay, what if we hear on Payekhov Rasiya? He set off for Russia. Okay, well we assume that Tipier on Vrasi, right? Because all we know is he set off on a one way trip. We can assume that he he's probably completed his one way trip, but the furthest he could have gotten here is Russia. Right now, what if we hear on yezdiov Rasiya? That's the round trip verb. He's completed a round trip to Russia. Tipier on Vamirikia. On a piait doma. He's back at home. Natasha Jivior Kvartiria. Natasha lives in an apartment. What if we say Anapa Bijal of Magazin? She ran off to the store. Well, where is she now? Well, we really don't know, but we can guess. Tipier anav magazine. But if we say anav biegel of magazine, that means she completed a round trip running to the store, right? She ran to the store and came back again. Tipier anav quartiria, right? She's back in her apartment. Okay, now remember, if we say anav bijit magazine or anav bijal of magazine or whatever, then uh, we would mean that she is on her way running to the store, right? She hasn't even made it there yet. She's on her way. Okay, let's talk about something. That, again, this is really important. We mentioned a couple of days ago that if we use a verb like chadit in the past tense, right, that's the indeterminate, right, the round trip. Chadit can describe a single completed trip in the past or multiple round trips, right? And we would need some context to know how many trips have been taken. 
But then we mentioned a kind of a very important uh, breakdown that if we use a, an indeterminate verb like chadit in the future, it automatically implies multiple trips. So sometimes students get into, get into trouble. They'll say something like, Ya chachu yezit vresiu. Okay, what does that tell me? It tells me that they want to make multiple round trips uh, to Russia, right? Because they're talking about the future, their future plans, and they're using the verb yezdit. Right? So if you say anything like ya chachu yezdit vresiu, or giving just a straight future tense, ya budu yezdit vresiu, that implies that you will take or want to take multiple trips to Russia. Okay, so sometimes I joke with the students, I'm like, maybe you should take one trip there first before you write, com uh, commit yourself to making multiple trips. Okay, so, uh, so the question is, how do we talk about a single future trip? Again, chadit yezdit those won't do. They're going to automatically mean repeated trips. The answer is the perfective verbs. Okay, so if we want to say, I want to go to Russia, or I will go to Russia, and we're talking about one time, our only choice is to use the poor verb, right, the perfective verb. Okay, so that's a really important, uh, that kind of example comes up all the time, so this is a really important uh, situation. Now, again, let's look at these examples and hash this out a bit. On yes do vresiu, there's our indeterminate verb, that can mean he made one round trip to Russia, or he made multiple round trips to Russia. Right in the future, on budget yezit vresiu, that means that it implies unambiguously that he will make multiple round trips to Russia. On budit yechet vresiu, by the way, if we use the determinant in the future tense, that means he will be underway to Russia. Right? So again, we don't see that example very often, but there's no reason we couldn't use it. But note that what it what it says, right? He will be on his way to Russia. Um, now, this brings us to our real point here today, is that if we want to talk about a single future trip, we have no choice but to use payechet, uh, right? On payechet vresiu, he'll go to Russia, meaning he'll make one trip to Russia. That's a single trip in the future. Now, again, you know, this is a bit of a stretch here, and you see how we can describe it as a kind of breakdown, right? That what does this sentence literally mean? He will set off for Russia. Um, now, again, we kind of assume, as usual, that he's going to make it to Russia. And, of course, we further assume that at some point he'll return, probably. But we don't know that for sure, right? But, again, in terms of these breakdowns, this is our only choice, really, for talking about a future trip to Russia whether or not we assume that it's going to be completed. Okay, so uh, more examples. On chochet payechet vresiu. Okay, here we're getting, we're using not the future tense, but a, a statement of desire, right, which is also directed at our future plans, right? On chochet payechet vresiu means he wants to make one trip to Russia. Again, that's our only option. Again, if we say on chochit yezit vresiu, that means he wants to make multiple trips to Russia. That's the breakdown. Now, again, just for comparison, if we say on chochit yechit vresiu, that means he wants to be on his way to Russia. Okay, now again, I guess you could say that, but that's a rather unusual thing to say. Uh, so you would hardly you would hardly ever hear that. Now, here's one more little point to make. What if we're negating? Um, we're making negative statements, saying things like, I don't want to go. Okay, now we've discussed already that when you negate verbs, you tend to get imperfectives. We've seen that with um, imperatives, and I think we've mentioned that just with general, with, with verbs generally. We'll talk more about that topic later. It is just kind of a general tendency that when you're using negation, you're, you're more likely for various reasons to see the imperfective, uh, although, you know, again, not necessarily. There's more to it than that. The question here really is that, we okay, if we've just said that when we're negating verbs, we often get imperfectives, well, how does that play out with verbs of motion, right? After all, we have two imperfectives for these verbs, right? Well, let's think about it. Here are the two possibilities. Onyi chochit yezdit vresiu versus onyi chochit yechet vresiu. Okay, again, we're getting the imperfective, but the first one implies he doesn't want to make multiple trips to Russia, uh, meaning 
right? So that's kind of a literal way to read it. Or we could pull back and say, you know, we're really talking about the idea of traveling to Russia, right? Just sort of in a general sense, right? Uh, it could be repeated or maybe not necessarily. It's just the general idea of traveling to Russia. This person doesn't want to do that. Right? So this person has no intention of going to Russia, essentially. And for that, we're using the indeterminate, yezdit, because again, we're essentially negating the idea of ever traveling to Russia at all, making trips to Russia. Okay, now number, the next one, on yechod v Rasiu, that's what we'd use for a one-time trip, right? Now again, we might expect that to be payechid. Um, we're going to talk more about this later. I'm, I'm fudging this just a little bit. I don't want to get too much into the aspectual thing. But essentially, kind of the rule of thumb here is, again, using imperfective with negation. On yechochet yechet v Rasiu means something like he doesn't want to be on his way to Russia, referring here to, to a specific trip. I don't want to make this trip to Russia. I don't want to go to Russia on one specific occasion. Okay, now... Um, Another set of examples for motion by foot or in-town outings. He doesn't want to go to work, period, right, at all. He has no intention of possibly ever going to work, I guess, or at least he doesn't want to do it. Okay, now if we use the determinant, that implies he doesn't want to make this particular trip to work. Okay, now... The main point here, I guess, is that you don't normally use paiti. You don't use a perfective motion verb with this in these negated situations uh, for reasons we'll discuss later, right? But essentially, you, you don't often see that. Okay, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and kind of explain this. We're getting into advanced aspect considerations, right? Which we're going to look at in, in book three when we revisit aspect. We're kind of bumping up against that here. That's why I don't really want to get into it. Uh, uh, but again, it's here just for reference. Remember, we're trying to lay out pretty much everything we can think to say about uh, these verbs of motion here. And later, if you want to come back, right, everything's sitting here for you so you can reference it. And I hope you'll be able to find almost any, any example you can think of uh, involving these verbs of motion. Okay, we have our final breakdown right now, and luckily this is a really easy one, and even more luckily, it mirrors exactly what we do in English. We're talking about the near future. Okay, so normally in Russian, if we, we would expect that if we're talking about the future, we're going to use the future tense, right? Uh, and that is kind of generally true, but there's this major exception. right? If we think about what we do in English, we don't often say, you know, Tonight, I will go to the movies, right? It sounds kind of robotic. I will go to the movies. Um, we usually say, I'm going to the movies tonight, or you know, something like that, right? We use a present tense to talk about action that we regard as being in the immediate future, in the near future. We could also do this even like a month in, in, in advance, right, for, a, for, a, for an upcoming trip, like next month, I'm going to Russia, right? So we do this all the time, and the window is really as broad as we want to make it, as long as we're sort of treating it as the near future, right, the immediate future. Okay, Russians do the same thing, right? So even where they might be kind of literally referring to a single trip in the future, like Sevonia, ya paidu v teatr, right, I'll go to the theater, literally, ya paidu, I will go, future tense. Instead, they could say, Sevonia ya idu v teatr, right? Uh, literally, Literally, I am going to the theater, or we can unpack that I am on your way to the theater. Although, again, you see this is a bit of a breakdown, right? Because the person isn't necessarily already on their way. They're just talking about a, a trip in the near future using a present tense verb. Now, remember, you wouldn't use chadit there because that would already automatically imply that you go to the theater regularly, right? It would be a different, right? Okay, let's look at these examples. That's perfectly acceptable. That refers to one trip in the future. Uh, but instead we could say using the present tense, right? in this case, determinate verb. Or compare uh, in this present tense, we could say 
Okay, so pretty much just like what we do in English, and also as in English, this is probably, the future tense is, uh, I would say, a lot more common in Russian than, again, for the immediate future than using the, uh, the perfective verb gymnation. Okay, let's do a quick exercise. And again, we've got some English blurbs here. We have very little context. So we just have to take our best guess and choose what, let's just pick an infinitive that we would use to express these ideas in, Rus in Russian. I'm going to Russia in a month. Okay, that is pretty, that's a pretty clear situation. That is a, a one-time future trip. Okay, so remember how important that is. We really have one choice. That's going to be payechets. Uh, Okay, we're going to go by vehicle, that's payechets. Ya payedu v Rasiu chiris nyesets would be the full sentence. Okay, number two, I don't want to go to Russia this summer. Okay, we've got to be careful. There is the negation, right? We don't want to go, and this summer makes it sound like a one, a single trip that we could potentially plan. We don't want to do it. We need to use imperfective. That's going to be yechets. Ya ni chachu yechet v Rasiu. Etim liatam it would be. That's instrumental. We won't get that case until the next chapter. Okay, so again, compare. Ya nikhatu yechet v Rasiu. That refers to a single trip you don't want to take. Ya nikhatu yezdit would refer generally to you don't want to ever go to Russia. Number three, I'll be traveling to Russia once per year. Okay, that is, this is a repeated future trip situation. That's going to be imperfect, uh, indeterminate. Yezdit, right? Ya budu yezdit v Rasiu kajdi god or ras v god. Right? There is another way to give these frequency expressions that we're going to learn later. For now, we could just say kajdi god, right? Every year I'll go to Russia. Number four, I want to go to Russia often. Okay, again, that's we're talking about our desire and what is it we desire? Repeated round trips to Russia. Those are also going to be in the future, right? Ya chachu yezdit v Rasiu chasta. Ya chachu chasta yezdit v Rasiu. As I flew to Moscow, I watched a movie. Okay, let's try to paraphrase that using a keyword. While I was on my way by air to Moscow, I watched a movie. Okay, that's going to be letiet. Kagda ya letiel, or kagda ya letiela v Moskvu. Yes, material kino. Um, it's pretty much the only time I ever watch movies anymore is when I'm stuck on the plane. Otherwise, they're so boring. Have you noticed? I mean, they're just unwatchable, absolutely unwatchable. I'd rather read a book. Okay, number six. Um, we're going to the store in 20 minutes. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, well, let's think. That is a future trip, right? A one-time future trip. Okay, so we could start out kind of literally using a future tense verb, muy payedim. Muy payedim, or actually this sounds like an in-store trip, an in-town outing, an in-town trip to the store. So let's default to motion by foot. That would be muy payedim. Muy payedim v magazin chiris dvadsit minut. Okay, we don't know how to say in 20 minutes yet, right? Uh, we'll learn that later. Now, is there anything else we could say here? Right. Well, again, we could say muy paidiom v magazine, but this is in 20 minutes, right? This is a, an, an immediate future trip. So much like in English, we'd say we're going to the store in 20 minutes. Look at the, right, what's in the textbook there. We're going to the store. We can also use present tense in Russian. Muy idiom v magazine. Muy idiom v magazine. Number seven, we'll be going to the store every evening. Okay, that's a repeat. Those are repeated future trips. Uh, again, since this is an in-town outing, we default to motion by foot. We're going to use chadit. Мы будем ходить в магазин каждый вечер. Number eight, it'll take us 10 minutes on foot. Uh, maybe a typo in your book there. I'm still catching a few typos every once in a while. Uh, it'll take us 10 minutes on foot. Uh, right, so uh, now again, this is a kind of tricky situation. We need to paraphrase this a bit. We will be on our way by foot for 10 minutes. That's one way to think about this in the Russian. We will be underway by foot for 10 minutes. That's going to be iti 
мы будем идти 20 минут. Right? Мы будем идти 20 минут. Again, you could throw in пешком to make perfectly clear that you literally mean you're going on foot. Right? Мы будем идти пешком 10 минут. Okay, one final topic that we've mentioned a little bit already, sequences, right? We know that sequences are associated in Russian with um, perfective verbs, right? First I did this, then I did that, then I did something else, right? We get a string of perfective verbs, right? Now remember, as always, that if we're talking about a repeated sequence, then we would be flipping over to uh, imperfective verbs, right? But if, let's say we're in the past and we say, first I went here, then I went there, then I went somewhere else, that's a string of perfective movements. And so we would normally expect to see perfective verbs describing that sequence. First this, completed action, then that, completed action, then another one. Right? This kind of sequence of completed actions. Right? Um, so let's look at some examples here. Сначала я пошла на лекцию, потом я пошла в библиотеку, потом в столовую, и наконец домой. Right, so we're telling about what we did today or whatever. First I went here, then I went there. And you see, of course, we don't need to repeat the verb every time, right? Um, but we get a sequence, right? Now, as we know, right, uh, because we can think of these as, uh, as a sequence of round trips, right, that's one of the breakdowns we talked about, then we could get in, uh, indeterminate verbs as well. Сначала я ходила на лекцию, right, I made a round trip to the lecture. Потом я ходила в библиотеку, потом в столовую, и, наконец, домой. Okay, now, if we do uh, give the verb, right, we don't just leave it understood in that final example, we need пошла, uh, right, because, again, the, uh, we have here, if we're talking about what we did today, right, we first went to the lecture, that's a round trip. Then we went to the, bib the library, that can be thought of as a round trip. But the final leg of the journey, that's not a round trip, obviously, right? That's, you're going from wherever it was, the cafeteria, home, right? That cannot be conceived of as a round trip, right? So it's that final leg we need to watch out for. Um, in this case, we get pashla, right? Now, uh, we looked already at ongoing sequences, kind of in the present tense. We could use those to tell what we do every day, right? Сначала я иду на лекцию, потом я иду в библиотеку, потом в столовую, и, наконец, домой. Okay, now we mentioned already, because of the breakdown, that again, we could use, we could see ходить here, because we could think of these as round trips. First I make a round trip to the lecture, the, the lecture then to the library, then to the cafeteria, and then home. Now again, if we mention that verb in the final, that final leg of the journey, it's going to need to be idu. Right, because that final leg of the journey, in this case a repeating journey, uh, it's, it's clearly repeated one-way motion. That's the only way we can think about it. Uh, now, again, if you just want to vaguely tell where you've been today, right? Куда ты ходила сегодня? Well, just use ходить plus some destinations, right? Some куда phrases. Я ходила на лекцию, в библиотеку и в столовую. Right, that's the easiest way, obviously, to just give this kind of sequence in terms of enumerating where you went today. Okay, let's go a few of these sequences. And we can throw in сначала, потом, наконец, to uh, these adverbs to underscore the sequence of events. Okay, uh, first I go to a lecture, then to a cafe, and finally home. Okay, now, uh, sounds like an ongoing schedule, right, as we get in present tense. So let's, uh, let's stick with the breakdown and uh, right, treat these as recurring round trips, right, the way they normally would be treated. But again, watch the final leg of the journey. Сначала я хожу на лекцию, потом я хожу в кафе. I'm going to repeat the verb, even though normally you needn't necessarily do that. И наконец я иду домой. That final leg is, we, we can't use the, the round trip verb. Yesterday, okay, so one time uh, sequence, I went to the store, then to the theater, then to the restaurant. Okay, so again, we could use a string of verbs like пошли, мы пошли, сначала мы пошли в магазин, потом мы пошли в театр, и потом, наконец, мы пошли в ресторан, 
uh, or you could say multhagili magazin, потом multhagili theater, и потом multhagili restaurant. Okay, now there, since we're not returning home, I guess we don't really know if that's the final leg in the sequence, right? So there, I guess you could still use multhagili, right? Multhagili restaurant. It's not at all clear that that's the final stage of the journey. Number three, tomorrow I'll go to class, then to the library, and finally home to the dorm. Okay, these are future, uh, a single, single future trips. Um, so we could say, завтра я пойду на урок или на занятие, потом я пойду в библиотеку, и потом я пойду, наконец, я пойду домой. Sorry, I'll go to the dorm. Я пойду домой в общежитие. So number four, in a month I'll fly first to France, then to Russia. Через месяц я полечу. Okay, so we're talking about a, a single future trip, and then we have here also a kind of a sequence. Uh, in any case, in the first example, we need я полечу сначала во Францию, потом в Россию. Okay, no need to really repeat a, a motion verb. We could say Polichu twice, but we don't really need that here. But we do have that kind of sequence of first I'll fly to France, then I'll fly to Russia. Uh, one time future trips, that's Polichu. Okay, let's translate some more examples. And uh, now we're choosing from all three types of, of motion verb we've seen so far, right? So let's try to bring it all together. And remember, when in doubt, focus on a keyword or a pictogram. Number one, did you go to the lecture today? Okay, it sounds like someone's back home. We're asking them, right, did you go somewhere today? So what we're really asking about in Russian is a completed round trip. Uh, this is an in-town trip, so we're going to assume we're going to default to motion by foot, and we'll ask, вы, plural, вы ходили на лекцию сегодня? Вы ходили? Number two, I go to lecture every morning at 8. Okay, remember that's, uh, there are two options here. If we're thinking rather technically, we would say, иду. Каждое утро в восемь часов я иду на лекцию, right? Repeated one-way trips. But since the uh, sort of big picture here is that the person is making repeated round trips, we would be perhaps more likely to hear хожу. Я хожу на лекцию. And number three, first I went to the lecture, then to the library. Okay, so here we, I guess, have two options. We could think of these as two completed uh, trips. We could say сначала я uh, ходил на лекцию, потом я ходил в библиотеку, right? If those were sort of two separate trips, right? Then in that case, we would think of them as two completed one-time round trips in the past. Uh, but if we were thinking of this as, you know, first we went to A, then to B, then to C, right? Uh, as part of our, you know, as part of the various legs of our one-time trip during the course of the day, we could also have a sequence of perfective verbs, right? Right, so there would be pashol, pashol, in terms of, again, a perfective sequence. Uh, number four, I'm flying to Moscow next week. Again, a couple of options. Uh, literally, this is future tense. We would say, ya polichu. Chiris Nigelio, ya polichu v Moskvu. Or na следующей неделе я полечу в Москву. But since this sounds like uh, immediate future, we could also use present tense. Я лечу. Я лечу в Москву. Number six, I'm going to fly to Moscow often. Sorry, number five, I want to go to Moscow. Okay, that's a one-time future trip. Our only option here is to use a perfective verb. So, я хочу поехать в Москву uh, in a week через неделю. Now, of course, we could be a bit more specific and say it's right, to literally to fly to Moscow, that would be fine too. But in any case, we need a poor verb, perfective verb. Number six, I'm going to fly to Moscow. Uh, sorry, I keep, yeah, sorry, number six. I'm going to fly to Moscow often. Okay, remember, that's future tense, but clearly repeated round trips, right? We see that often thrown in there. That leaves us with no option, but um, yezdit, right? We want to make this journey multiple times, multiple round trips. Uh, and again, here we're being specific with flying. Я буду летать. Я буду летать в Москву. Я часто буду летать в Москву. 
number seven, where was he running to yesterday? Okay. okay, it sounds like we caught sight of him. He was on his way running somewhere. And our question is, Kudon Bijal, Kudon Bijal Tira. Number eight, where did he run off to? Okay, running off sounds like, uh, you see how in some cases the English mirrors fairly closely what the kind of the point of the Russian is, right? If we say, oh, well, he ran off, well, it means kind of like our, our keyword, right? Just set off, right? All we know is that he was here and now he's gone, right? So number eight would be perfective. Number nine, she loves to run in the park. Okay, that's just a general activity verb, right? That calls for indefinite in Russian. That's maybe biegets, biegets. Anna Lubit Biegets Gye Parkia. Okay, number ten. I usually go to the theater on foot, but I take the subway home. Okay, these are clearly repeating uh, legs of, of trips, right? Repeating one way trips, and we're here especially contrasting how do you get there and how do you get home again. Right? So first half, Yabuishna Idu of Theater Pishkorm. Uh right, and now the second half I take the subway home. Okay, number 11, I went to New York yesterday. It sounds like a completed round trip, right? If we assume the person's back, then we're thinking a completed round trip, and that would be yezdil. Ya yezdil v New York chira. Ya yezdil v New York chira. Well, let's take, again, when in doubt, try to compare all three examples. Ya payechov New York would mean I set off for New York. Ya yechov New York would mean I was on my way by vehicle to New York. That means you didn't get to New York. Right, so here if someone says I went to New York and they're clearly home again, that would be ya yezdil v New York. Number 12, where is that boat going to? Okay, hey, we see a boat sailing across the river or whatever. Where is it going to? Kuda etet karabl klivyot. Right, Kliviot, our determinate verb of motion. Okay, I'm exhausted. I'm sure you are too. That does it for now, at least for verbs of motion. Uh, as I said earlier today, right, we've really covered this very carefully. Um, and uh, we'll return to this topic near the end of book two uh, when we'll add verbs of conveyance and also. Um, a few simple prepositions will be kind of a preview of how, sorry, prefixes. We'll get a little preview of how prefix verbs of motion are going to work. And then in book three, we'll cover prefixes very carefully, right? We'll look at all the prefixes. We'll continue doing that in book four when we talk more about word formation. We'll start adding prefixes to other motion, ver like action verbs. Um, and so anyway, uh, we'll, we'll return to this very difficult topic and by the way, I should add that, um, you know, since I first started using this system, uh, I've been pretty happy with the results, right? Especially by, by the end of second year, I think once students have been through this and kind of reviewed it a little bit, maybe I guess we review it at least twice, then they usually make the, the, the choices pretty well. I think most of them, the ones who are really, you know, they studied and they, they, were, they were serious about, about it, they learn it pretty well, I think. Uh, which is quite an accomplishment. So if you feel at all at all comfortable with these at this stage, or you at least have some general idea of how they work, uh, you, should pat, you should pat yourself on the back because it's quite an accomplishment. Uh, and as with all things in Russian, it'll take more review and more practice to really start using these just uh, spontaneously, right? It won't happen overnight. Um, by the way, I mean, a, a big part of Russian, and it's kind of the goal of this course in a lot of ways, is to really try to understand what's going on with Russian in a way that's preparing you to process whatever Russian you hear down the road, right? So I hope at the very least, even if you aren't speaking fluent Russian at this stage, which would be very a very uh, high bar to set, right? That at least you're um, understanding how Russian works, what the key distinctions are, how the grammar works, how people are choosing generic verb forms. And so that when you, when you hear new things, you'll at least be able to process what you're hearing. And, uh, you know, if you're like me, once you immerse yourself in Russia and are really using the language on a daily basis, you'll have, you'll have these aha moments constantly, right? Because you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it now. I see it now. This is Russian in action, right? Okay, so um, anyway, enough for today. Until next time, let's go down your